Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to take a look at a knife from Mr. Craig Brown at Brown Knives, and this is called the Parabolic. Now, before I open up this box, because I think once I do, you're going to become so distracted with the knife itself that you may not pay particular attention to what I'm saying in the first couple of seconds. So, let me start this off by telling you that this is the second knife that he has ever made. The second completed knife. And I cannot stress that nearly enough. Because what you're about to see is not the typical representation of an early on knife maker. Let's start with the packaging while I have that sitting out here. Uh, nice clean packaging. Again, this is something that I have talked about in the past if you're going to make a special purchase you want to kind of feel like it's special even if it's just from opening the box even if you never see the box again till you sell it or trade it or whatever else it is nice to have that uh, as part of the overall experience when you're first unboxing your knife once we get this open you're gonna see what I was talking about about how special this really is uh, first off, he's got the uh, his logo and name in here, and this is expertly cut out, as you can see. It looks like something that the Nalpak Group does. You guys have seen videos uh, of my Pelican case done in this similar fashion. So, he spent the extra money, took the extra time, and put the extra thought into his packaging, which really translates well into his knife, because you, as you can see, a lot of thought has gone into this. What we're looking at here is something that I feel is completely stunning. What you've got is a 6061 T6 aluminum frame. He will be offering these as well in titanium, so please keep that in mind. And you've got four inlays of Damascus plus the Damascus clip. Now, when you look at this, you think to yourself, that's that's really, really nicely done for it being only the second knife he's ever made. But folks, it's about to get a shitload better. Are you ready for this? This is an integral. He didn't take two scales, piece them together with a backspacer or standoffs or anything else. He came out of the gate with an integral flipper. And that's something that I, I don't recall ever seeing anybody else ever do. And when you look at integrals and you look at custom-made knives, you're looking at guys like Peter Recenti is probably the best example that I can think of. And his knives start around $1,400, and you're generally going to spend around two grand. This is so close to that level of quality, out of the gate, that I find it almost unbelievable, to be uh, perfectly honest with you. Three and a half inch blade, CPM 20 CV, fantastic steel, great for edge retention, great for corrosion resistance. It's a good, hard working steel. The entire knife was machined, including the blade. And then he puts the final edge on with a wicked edge. Now, for anybody that's used a wicked edge, you know that that means you have a ridiculously screaming sharp edge on this. It absolutely does. It also means that it took him quite a long time to do it. Um, there's a lot of time that went into the making of this, into the design of this. And let's talk a little bit about Craig um, and the work that went into making this. Craig is actually an aerospace manufacturing engineer. So he lives his life around design. He loves to fabricate things. He loves to manufacture things. And kind of tying that in with his interest in knives has brought us this, his very first model called the Parabolic. Now, he devoted over seven months to the development of this knife and I can't imagine how many iterations he went through and how many different um, designs he threw away before he got to this but this is it's truly amazing I find it to be an amazing achievement for someone who's just starting out in the game so I'm going to tell you right now when he gets to his 10th knife his 20th knife his 50th knife holy shit look out 
this is a product that would be turned out by a 10 year knife maker perfectly without exaggeration is it a perfect knife no it's not a hundred percent perfect and I'll, I'll dig into a little bit of that in, in just a couple of minutes uh, but what I'm gonna be talking about really is nitpicky little things it's it's nothing of any uh, great uh, great concern that's for damn sure if I had spent fifteen hundred dollars on this from a knife maker who had been around for ten plus years I would be every bit as happy with it and it would have lived up to the expectation that I would have had at that price and at that experience level what you're looking at is under a thousand dollars I'm not gonna nail it down to the price because he hasn't fully decided on what his prices will be uh, but this was a good chunk less than a thousand dollars now when he goes into the titanium frame obviously that price is gonna have to go up let's give you a couple of close-ups here before I really get further into this because I really want you to get a good idea of the overall quality and the fit and finish which is really hard sometimes for me to convey to you because you're not sitting here holding and touching the knife but it really is wonderfully done he has uh, mirror polished the pivot I've got my fingerprints on it but it is nicely mirror polished really really strong etch on the Damascus inlays and look how well matched they are into the frame and how well matched they are to one another this is again it's I can't stop saying it but it really is an amazing achievement get back here to the clip and the fourth inlay he has beautifully sculpted this entire frame so that there is uh, not a single hot spot on it the only sharp edge on this entire knife is here on the blade that's it even on the lock bar or on the uh, I should say subframe lock there is no sharp edge and I can't tell you how many times I've gotten knives from some of the best names in the business and every time you go to disengage the lock it digs into your thumb more and more and more and for those of us that buy flippers we spend a lot of time doing this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth so we are constantly disengaging our locks so you do that about 20 times on a lock bar or liner lock or subframe lock whatever it is that has a sharp edge right there and you don't ever want to touch the knife again it's it's it becomes painful he's rounded everything really nicely it's almost like it's melted has a really really nice feel in the hand uh, he has cut away this section here into the frame and that's a natural spot for your thumb to drop into and a natural grip feels good got the jimping down there on the blade uh, fairly effective I do feel it kind of digging in a little bit and that's one of the the little nitpicks that I have is for me personally if I were to jimp the blade in this area I would have also followed through and done the same thing on the frame uh, that would have given you a much more positive grip on this as it stands you can tell that there's jimping there but because of the height of the frame being as high as the blade or even a little bit taller you would have to actually jam your finger in there in order for you to really uh, get that grip uh, the only other gripe I really have is about the flipper tab and its positioning um, and that's really just in relation to the size of my hand uh, I, I've mentioned this before I wear a size large glove so if you wear a medium or small this won't even be an issue for you but for me um, I would have rather have had that flipper tab a little bit further forward it makes me feel just a tiny bit cramped you can see that the butt of the knife does go right to the very edge of my hand but it, it almost feels like I'm holding it like this so I'd much rather be like this and have a little bit more room again that's a personal thing and as I mentioned before these are very very tiny nitpicks on this knife because there's there's nothing about it that's bad and that's what's so amazing I really didn't expect this when I talked to Craig and I talked to his uh, lovely wife Alex about this knife through its stages of development we began talking about this I believe it was back in April uh, so several several months ago you know I knew it was gonna be uh, a brand new maker with very very little experience um, 
So I didn't really set the bar too high, to be honest with you. But uh, I knew I liked the design. I liked how it looked. And I was like, yeah, I'm on board with this. Let's do this. Let's do something cool. And uh, he just blew me away. I didn't expect the Damascus inlays. That was uh, kind of a surprise. And you know what? It's a nice package for the price. i tell you that right now. It really, really is. The only other thing that I would change, and uh, I've already discussed this with Craig, is uh, for me personally, and everybody is different, I like a very sharp, strong detent. Not a finger breaker, but a real strong detent. And if there was a little bit less relieved in the lock and it had a little bit more pressure, I believe it would push the uh, detent in just hard enough. Now, it's not a bother for somebody that likes to push button. As you see, it flips out just fine. But for me, I generally tend to be a light switcher. And if you do that, you see, it won't always go to full lock. And it's the detent actually feels pretty good when you actually just feel for the detent. It doesn't feel too bad, um, but it just needs to be pushed in a little bit harder. His lockup is fantastic. I mean, he's already learned and mastered the lockup. And that's what's incredible, because you've got to realize, here's a guy that's obviously masterful at machining he's got that down but now he's going to take that and apply that to knife making and that really is a different world and you can speak to any machinist that's turned into a knife maker and they'll tell you uh, it really is a different world there's these little tiny nuances in the way that especially folders are made that it's you are learning a new skill there's you're not just going to carry over your skills from being a machinist and pump out a, a, an amazing, flawless, perfect knife that's worth a thousand dollars. It's going to take some time. There's a little bit of a learning curve there, and he's really done it fantastically. Now, obviously, in the uh, the field that he's in, in, in aerospace, uh, he's an aerospace engineer. I mean, you pretty much have to deal with perfection on a daily basis. So I don't know what I was expecting. I, I, I didn't think it was going to fall on his face here or anything, but. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really blown away by this. The only thing that I love is this consistent arc from the tip to the tail. Take a good look at that. It is beautifully shaped. It's very, very appealing to the eye, but it feels especially good in the hand. It feels like a very natural thing to be keeping in your hand going to sound strange the way I worded that, but I, I think you know what I mean. It, it's, it's a very natural feel, uh, almost any way you hold this knife. All the way around, amazing job. The detail work, the inlays, everything was just fantastic. I would definitely tell you to keep an eye out on this guy. Go over to his Instagram. It's just simply Brown Knives at Brown Knives on Instagram. And even if the parabolic isn't your cup of tea, if for some reason this design doesn't speak to you, this is just one design. He's going to be making several designs throughout his career. Keep an eye on him because the level of quality that I see here for the second knife he's ever made tells me that he is absolutely going to do great things. As long as he doesn't stifle his creativity, as long as he doesn't let others' negativity bring him down in any way, because you know there are trolls all through the knife community. If he sticks to what he's doing and he constantly innovates, I mean, you, you could be looking at somebody that you know, gets, you know, $20,000 a knife at auction like Todd Rexford. I mean, it really, the, the sky is the limit when you see the, the, the design nature that goes into this, the hard work that went into this. Let's go ahead and focus there. There we go. Nicely done all the way around. Again, it's not a 100% perfect knife. But on a custom knife, that's not often found anyway at any price range. What I can tell you is this is something that I am absolutely proud to have in my collection, absolutely proud to carry in my pocket. I've been showing it to a few of my friends. You guys might have seen it <clears throat> on Instagram. I think it's fantastic, and I think it's truly unique. It's, it's a breath of fresh air. It's something 
different than what everyone else is doing. And I would, I would hope to see in the future as he progresses um, that he does go into hand grinding his blades because that really, folks, that's the fun of it. That's the fun of making any knife is hand grinding your blades. So he is doing the machining like he's doing on the frame and that he's putting the final edge on with the, uh, the wicked edge. Doesn't affect the performance at all. Doesn't make, it, make him any less of a knife maker because obviously everything on this functions flawlessly. Everything was done wonderfully. Uh, so he definitely exhibits the skill. Uh, I just can't wait to see what he does when he goes uh, full tilt and crazy on this shit, boy. Mm -mm -mm. One other thing I wanted to mention, uh, as you're ordering through him, you are uh, very likely to... Uh, be dealing with his wife Alex. She is fantastic. He actually uh, recruited her into the business and pretty much anything that doesn't involve physically making the knife, she's doing. You know, so she's, you know, dealing with the customer inquiries and orders and all this kind of good stuff. Um, and it kind of shows you the dedication that they have to this because she also has a full-time career uh, in project management in the aviation world herself. So they're both sacrificing what little time they have off to start up this business and to get these knives out the door and get these into people's hands um, and, and get the enjoyment uh, of being able to do that. And I think it's fantastic when you can, when you can work with your, your spouse, your partner, whatever, uh, in, in business if you're able to do that and not bite each other's head off on, on a daily basis, uh, it really is a fantastic thing because it can bring you together. And uh, I think it translates well to the customer also. Uh, the, the, the few couples that I know that do make knives or, or are both involved in the knife business, um, it's always a real pleasure to, uh, to deal with both of them. So there it is, guys. Uh, this is the Parabolic, a three and a half inch blade easy to carry. It's a little bit on the heavy side because my version has a lot of Damascus. His base version is going to have uh, titanium inlays into the aluminum frame and I'm pretty sure you can get those titanium inlays colored to whatever you'd like and then he's going to be doing a titanium frame version that will have different inlays and if you want something exotic I mean I put up, I put up a couple of pictures and already, I know one of my buddies already <laughs> called him up and said, Hey, I want one in Damasteel and Timascus. And I'm sure that threw Craig for a loop because he wasn't expecting uh, an order quite that with, ex you know, materials that expensive. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really see any limitations to the materials that he can use as long as it's available. So, uh, you know, do something crazy. Maybe do something in a, uh, in a full titanium frame and then have... Uh, like Westinghouse inlays done, or, ooh, Mother of Pearl. How sexy would that be, huh? Ooh, yeah. Maybe a two-tone blade, do a little polish down here. There's, there's a world of opportunity here when you have this much area to play with, especially on this side. A lot of times, this is the ugly side. This is the side that, you know, that makers don't focus on so much. And I love this side. I love that one long inlay and the way that it follows this organic flow of this design. And I think that might be what attracts me so much to this knife. It's that purely organic flow. It reminds me a lot of the size and shape of my Rockstead shin. And that could be another reason why I like this so much. It's very familiar to me. I've had that knife over three years now. And as many of you know, it's one of my top favorite knives ever. To have something done to this degree in an integral, as as impossible as it is to make an integral I'm floored and it, there, there are only so many expletives in my vocabulary that I could use to describe this and I'm running dry it's it's just one of those knives that the second you pull it out you go oh shit I didn't really expect that and that's a really great feeling it's a great feeling to have that kind of surprise uh, these days it's a great feeling to have that surprise at a price range that is an astronomical and it's also nice to have that surprise in that price range that's not extra astronomical on a maker whose books are open where you can watch this video one of the rare times you can watch a video of mine and I can say yeah you can buy one of these you can call up the maker and they they don't have closed books or you know, they have a five-year wait. You can call up right now and say, hey, I want one of those knives that Jim showed in that video. 
and he'll set you up. I don't know what his, you know, what the the wait time is. I'm sure it's not very much. Um, I know that he has ordered a lot of steel. I saw on his Instagram account he had a couple of bars of steel there. So it looks like he is going to be ramping this up. I think he's on his fourth. I think he's on his fourth knife right now, and his work in progress pictures on his account. So you're getting in early, baby. And I'm telling you, if he keeps on. And he keeps innovating, and he keeps evolving over the years. You know what? In 10 years, he could be that next Todd Rexford or Bob Lum or any other amazing name that you want to think of. You could be getting in on the ground floor here. Now, I'm not much into making predictions, but I'm not usually wrong when I spot a raw talent. And I'm very, very pleased to be able to bring new talent to you guys and expose them to you where you can get in early. That's a really good feeling for me because you're getting something awesome. And the maker that's just starting out and wondering, is this a good idea? Should I be doing this? Can I support my family doing this if I'm doing it full time or if I'm doing it part time like uh, Craig is? Is it worth me taking the little bit of time I have off work to do this? And it helps to justify that. And, and that also makes me feel good. So, uh, whichever way you go, guys, uh, I think that you should definitely, at the very least, give him a follow and see what he's doing. Talk to him. See what kind of guy he is. I think he's pretty awesome, and I think you will, too. With that, I'm out of here, and I'll catch you on the next video.